Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. I'm John. A lot of times I need to flatten things for various reasons, and that can be kind of hard to do. You need a flat reference surface. What I often do is I use this part of my table saw, which is nice and flat. I will take down a piece of sandpaper. Sometimes I have to put two side by side, and then I will flatten like that. That works, it's very cumbersome, it's very time consuming. It'd be nice to have a better way to do it. One way that actually works very well is a disc sander. Well, this is my disc sander. Um, you can see I don't even have sandpaper on it because I never use it. This thing's pretty cheaply built. This is not really worth much. I like this belt sander here and I use this quite a lot. If you want a disc sander, I wouldn't recommend this. So it'd be awesome to have a really big disc sander. These are actually quite cheap. Uh, I got these on Amazon, and uh, I will leave a link in the description. The problem is I don't have a sander to put them on. Uh, disc sanders are expensive. They take up floor space. It's, a, it's an object that you're not going to use that frequently. We're going to solve this problem today uh, because I have a tool in this shop that is going to make an awesome disc sander that is quite easy to use and doesn't take up any additional floor space. I'm talking about my wood lathe. This is a two horsepower variable speed lathe. It's a GO 766. It spins anywhere from 100 to 3200 RPM. You know what, it's actually three horsepower. The old memory's going. But today I am going to make an attachment for this that's gonna turn this into an awesome disc sander. Let's get to it. So I need a face plate. I made this in a previous video. Certainly not necessary to make your own. You can buy them quite cheaply. You know, they're gonna be different for different lathes. My lathe is an inch and a quarter, uh, eight threads per inch. Uh, so that's what the thread is there. It's a common thing with wood turning. How do you line up the face plate perfectly with a center that you've already drilled? You know, you can eyeball it and get it pretty close, but uh, having a metal lathe, these were aluminum cans that I melted down and poured into stock and uh, I have a bunch of this and I just ended up using a piece of this. So I turned this down so it fit perfectly into my face plate and it's got a center on it. So it will help me get that face plate exactly in the center. I don't screw them all the way down right away because if I do that it's going to push the face plate. If I put them all in like this it averages out. In order to glue these two together, I need a bunch of clamps, and uh, long reach clamps are nice. It turns out that the longest reach clamp I have is this lathe. That way. See, that helps hold it centered, and it allows me to put pressure right in the center where I don't have the ability to clamp it. And then I'm going to put some long reach clamps here, and then all my shorter clamps around the perimeter, and then we're going to let that dry. I don't want to leave any big clumps of glue anywhere because uh, this will end up not being flat. And it'll probably end up not being somewhat flat anyway, but I want to keep it as flat as possible. That looks rather ridiculous. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is going to show up on camera. But when I hold a straight edge up to this, it looks really good. And I can even spin it around. I don't see any, any issues. The problem is that's not the best way to check. The best way to check is to use your tool rest and look at how it tracks along it. And when I do that, it tracks really good here. Out here, it starts to wobble a little bit. And at the outer edge, I'm getting maybe a 30 seconds, which would be you know somewhere around a millimeter of wobble there. I'm going to try to just turn that out with a real light uh, scraping. I'm also going to turn the outer circumference down a little bit. It's a little bigger than I need to be. My original plan was to put some quarter inch plate on this, but I took a closer look at the plate and did some measurements. It's nowhere near flat enough. The problem is if this isn't perfectly flat when you're sanding, only the high points are going to hit 
and it's gonna make your piece wobble, it would just make the sander ineffective. So it's gotta be flat. I'm gonna get this true, and then I'm gonna put shellac on it, and then I'm gonna put my paper on. Uh, the concern is when I go to change out the paper, you know, months from now, is it gonna tear up the MDF and pull pieces out of it? If it does, I'm gonna have to turn it back down to true and then put a piece of steel on it, which I would epoxy and then screw so that it goes through. But I think for now, you know, don't make it harder than it needs to be. Uh, let me get this true. We'll try the shellac and hopefully that'll do it. Maybe some people out there have had experience with this. I looked online, I couldn't get a definitive answer. If you know the best way to attach sanding discs to MDF and be able to change it out in the future, uh, put a comment below. That'd be, uh, that'd be nice to know. The other thing I'm gonna do is before I, I really put this to use is I am gonna put some longer screws in the face plate that reach into this second piece of MDF. And I'm also gonna put some screws on this back side here that tie these together with some mechanical means. So you'll notice that I did not use my old face plate, but I used the new one that I fabricated. Why did I do that? I realized I've never once reached for that other face plate and wished it was different. Uh, it always works, so there's really no reason to replace it. This one has a weld here with a fillet, and you know, I didn't take the mill scale off of this before I welded it, uh, so it may not have penetrated as deep as it should have. I really need to learn not to cut corners when I'm working with metal. This disc sander is probably never gonna have a catch because it's a sander. You know, it's gonna have some resistance and spin down, spin up, but it's never gonna like have a tool dig in and pop and try to pull something off of the lathe. If it were to break, that's what would break it. And if I was turning something and this weld broke, that would really kind of suck, especially something really big. So maybe I'll make another plate in the future and I'll do a better job prepping and welding. But I decided this one, this one will be fine on the sander. My other one has always been fine for me. So I'm just gonna stick with that. All right, I've got the tool rest right up against the wheel. And, and let me give it a spin. There is still a little bit of movement, like right in here, but it is so minimal. I seriously doubt any disc sander that I would buy would be that much better. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I decided what I'm going to use is polyurethane and I just mixed some up 50-50 mineral spirits and polyurethane so I want it to soak in and really get down in there and once that's dry I'm going to put another coat of straight poly on there and I think that's going to give me a good surface here that my paper can stick to but will also penetrate into the MDF and be something I can pull the disc off of hopefully in the future. This stuff's really thin, so I want a lot of it on here so that it'll soak in deep. That's got the first coat of 50-50 poly on it. So I'm gonna give this a real light sanding before I do the second and final coat. And this is just straight polyurethane. All 
All right, I'm gonna leave that spinning for a while so that it doesn't drip or develop any imbalances. With the plate vertical, it could potentially, the, the finish could wanna run down. You keep spinning it, it's gonna be even. While I'm letting this thing spin and set up, I wanted to talk. I'm sure I'm gonna to get tons of comments that I'm doing it wrong. Yeah, I might be, I don't know. I've never made one of these before. Uh, like most things I do, I'm winging it. There's a lot of different ways I could have done this. I considered many different things. I mean, I could have gone out and bought a piece of half inch flat plate, and that probably would have been best. But, you know, I had the MDF. The MDF is cheap. It's hard to get a piece of half inch plate. It's hard to cut out a piece of half inch plate. It's hard to make it perfectly round. There's a lot of challenges there. My initial plan was to put some quarter inch plate on it, but it turned out that wasn't flat enough. I think that probably would have been better, but it would have been, you know, quite a bit more work. This is one of those things where maybe cutting corners does work, you know? If this works, it works. Do it the easy way. Don't make it harder than it needs to be. I could have maybe done uh, some contact cement and put something like Formica on this, uh, or a piece of acrylic or something on the surface. And you know, in the future, if I have problems, I may still end up doing that. Something else you guys might find interesting, I've seen people make these face plates out of wood. I think for a sander like this, that's actually fairly reasonable. This thing is not going to be seeing sudden stop kind of forces. It's going to have gentle pressure put on as you sand it. I've seen people use a good solid hardwood, like a piece of oak or a piece of maple, and you need a tap to be able to, to cut the threads in it, but you just turn down your face plate, drill it out, tap it, put it back on the lathe, turn it true, and then, and then you're ready. You can even glue something to it because now you're going wood to wood. That is definitely an option. So a lot of different ways to skin this cat. Why is that even a saying? That's a weird thing. Who wants to skin a cat? And who cares how many ways there are to do it? Anyway, leave a comment if you think I'm doing, doing it wrong, uh, if I'm gonna regret this. I will certainly give updates in the future on how this is doing uh, if I have any problems. The, the, the issue is most likely I'm gonna put a sanding disc on this and I'm not gonna change it for a year or two. So uh, it may be quite a while before I, I have any regrets, uh, if ever. Let's let this dry. I'm gonna put a disc on it, uh, but I'm not quite done. I got another thing to do. This is dry now, and I'm gonna hit it with some sandpaper just to take any high spots off. Uh, surprisingly, it's very easy to determine the heavy side. Um, you can see I've marked this right here. I've done this several times to confirm. If I put it out and let go, that will end up down. So putting that straight down, this clamp weighs about 28 grams. Then it ends up down with a I noticed about as much force or as much momentum as it does when the clamp's not on there for the heavy side. So I decided, well, my target must be around half of that. So I experimented a little bit and I came up with this combination. This is a screwdriver bit and some duct tape and that weighs 13.1 grams. Put the heavy down. Let's put our counterweight up and see how we do. Looked like it was about to fall, but uh, nope. Staying right there. Well, that's interesting. Previously, I tried this, and it it looks like my heavy is still going down. Maybe I need a little more weight. Let's try this again. The heavy part went down just a tiny bit, not much. I put it over here. Again, here's the heavy part of the wheel. Okay, I need a little bit more than that. Yeah, a little bit more. And yeah, just kind of oscillating there. There's our heavy mark. So I doubt that is perfect, but it's pretty darn close. So let's see how much this weighs. 
All right, so that's 14.9 grams. Now it's all the way out here on the periphery. I'm gonna be putting screws in a little bit. So I'm gonna need probably a touch more weight uh, to counter because uh, it doesn't have the same lever arm. So these six screws weigh 15 grams. Now I don't think this weight of sawdust is gonna amount to anything, but I am kind of curious, so I'm gonna weigh this. 0.9 grams, so a little bit. That is pretty darn close. I might put it on the lathe and see how it does. So even though those screws were not long enough to get all the way through, they still bubbled this up slightly. So I just hit it with some sandpaper, and just to seal that surface again, I'm gonna put a little CA glue on it. So I'm at 340 RPM, I can't feel anything. Uh, I can feel a little bit right there, that's 480. But it's really not much. And then at 500 it's nice and smooth. Now how fast can I spin this thing safely? I have no idea. As I stand in the line of fire, there's 750. I'm actually kind of curious what people think on that. What should my RPM limit on this be? You know, a lot of fairly big diameter things have a relatively low RPM that they, they spec for, so 750 is probably faster than I'll want to spin this thing. I don't know, comment below, tell me what you think. What's that? You think we're done? Nope. One more important thing I need to make. Come on, video's not over yet. Let's go. So if I wanted to flatten something, you just use it like this. Around 700 RPM there. Yep, that's doing a nice job. And if I want to use it just like a regular disc sander, bring it to rest over. So it won't be as aggressive there as it will out there. Just because the, the linear foot per second is much less. That's a piece of oak. It's one of those sandpaper cleaning sticks. I don't expect to use this table a whole lot, 
but it was so easy to make, you know, you might as well. All you need is a, is a flat plate and a bar. Uh, but for flattening things, now if it's 20 inches or under, it's gonna be a piece of cake. So uh, I'm really happy with that. Tell me what you guys think. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you on the next one.